Season of Discovery Phase 4, it's only been out for a few weeks, but already a ton of different class imbalances have popped up. Blizzard is bringing some massive changes and nerfs, and players are being forced to scramble to keep up. Let's talk about all the current and upcoming class changes, and how you can best navigate them to maximize your success. So first, we're going to be talking the impact of all the big nerfs, and who's likely going to get some changes next. Then we're going to talk faction imbalance. Is it fair that one of the factions is really pulling ahead in damage, and should Blizzard step in? Then we're going to talk about how you can best take advantage of all the chaos, with the likely buffs and nerfs coming. So there are really three major changes this week that I wanted to talk about. The first being that Rogue and Venom, it no longer scales with spell power. The end result of that is that rogues no longer really get much benefit from spell power flasks, but it also means that rogues lose at least 100 damage per second. We've also got a pretty major hidden nerf to damage dealers in Ultrak Valley. Every single player now has a 50% health buff. It's a huge buff to healers in Ultrak Valley, and it's a big nerf to different burst classes like rogues. And Blizzard has promised quite a few different PvP changes in the near future, so this is just the first of many. I know you're not just here for the PvP changes though. Let's focus on those Hunter nerfs next. So in Phase 4, we all know Hunters, they've been a huge topic of discussion. They make Alterac Valleys take way longer. They dominate in dungeons and top the meters. And recently, they've really been destroying the meters in Molten Core as well. So this week, with all the different complaints going around, Blizzard was finally forced to step in and nerf Hunters. The nerf of choice that Blizzard went for was to nerf the TNT rune. The TNT rune, starting in Phase 3, was a key source of Hunter damage. It essentially increased your traps and explosive shot damage by 10%. In Phase 4, though, your traps and your explosive shot also scaled with the TNT rune, with 50% of your attack power. So to cut Hunters down, Blizzard has nerfed the TNT rune from the 50% scaling to 25% scaling. This has led to a near-immediate drop of about 200 DPS from Top Hunters. At a glance, it might not seem like much, but when you consider that Top Hunters are doing about 3,000 DPS, it's an over 5% nerf. So some Hunter players like Sarth, they did believe that nerfing Explosive Trap was a good idea. That being said though, he was not happy with the fact that it was just a flat nerf. See, this nerf, it really significantly lowered the single target damage output of Hunters, really to the point where Hunters might fall out of favor in top guilds, and you'd only be bringing them for their buff purposes. On the optimistic side, Cliff on the Hunter Discord, he really didn't think the nerfs had much of an impact, and honestly, he still thought that Hunters would dominate single target and be the best for AoE too. My take over here is that Hunters really weren't that overpowered. I know they were really annoying in Alterac Valley. I know they dominated in dungeons. But realistically, if you compare them to classes like Ferals and Rogues, they weren't that far ahead. To me, it's really concerning that just complaining on the forums is enough for Blizzard to act and nerf a class. It signals to me that Blizzard is looking to just quiet the loudest complaints. And I've seen that with other games, and it doesn't usually work out very well. See, we're entering this new era of the game where people can just lobby on Twitter, they can lobby on the forums, and they usually get their way. So with that theory in mind, future changes to the game are going to have to meet two specific criteria. First, they've got to be things that have been publicly complained about on Twitter, on Reddit. See, if people don't think a glass is worth talking about, Blizzard might not think it's worth changing in the first place. Second, it's clear the public and Blizzard as well, they spend a ton of time on Warcraft logs. So if a glass is really underperforming or overperforming there, that's a pretty likely indicator something's going to change. So the first most likely candidate for changes is Boomkin. Top streamers have definitely been advocating for Boomkin buffs. And on the Boomkin Discord, a ton of people are writing really depressing essays about how Boomkins need changes. Meanwhile, they're just performing terribly. If you look at the logs, Boomkins are usually near the bottom. So suggested changes include some kind of rework to the scaling of Boomkins. The other issue everybody can agree on is that Boomkins need some sort of hit talent in their talents. Boomkins are having really serious hit issues, so one of the potential fixes would be adding, say, 3% hit to Moonglow. So second on the likely buff side is Ret Paladins. The consensus from Ret Paladins is that their abilities just don't hit very hard, they haven't been scaling very well, particularly the rune abilities. There's another underlying problem that I picked up on though. The average Ret Paladin, they're having to dispel, they're having to support their raid, but the very top Red Paladins, they don't do any of that support. See, a way to immediately increase the average Red Paladin DPS, the average Boomkin DPS, would be to lower the amount of magic dispels, lower the amount of curses that you have to do in the raid. Our Boomkin on one fight, he had to do 30 different decurses. Even if you give Boomkins a huge damage increase, they're never going to be able to compete with a Hunter or a Rogue. 
if they're spending the whole fight decursing. So on the dark side, we've got to talk about some potential nerfs. Ferals are in a category that Blizzard has specifically said they don't want. They do not want to support glass at the very top of the meters, and right now the number one parse is a feral druid. The problem though is if you nerf ferals, you're nerfing an entire faction. Alliance rely on ferals for utility, their wild strikes, whereas Horde, they don't rely on that nearly as much with their shaman totems. That leads us very nicely into a serious problem that is starting to really boil over, which is that one of the factions does way more damage than the other one. Take a Hunter Sim for example, you put a Night Elf in, you put a Tarn in. The DPS increase from the Night Elf to the Tarn is about 220. The main reason really is Shamans. We have the Might versus Grace of Air problem. And then we also have Stormstrike for the increased 20% nature damage. See, Boomkins with Dream State, they can apply that 20% debuff as well. The problem is Dream State relies on crits. That means Hunter damage in Alliance is always going to be worse because Dream State uptime is just way less reliable. See, the big problem is that pre-level 60, if there was some kind of faction imbalance, people really didn't complain about it much. After all, your class was going to get changed in the next phase. But now the balance feels a lot more final. Imagine playing an Alliance character for hundreds of hours, only to realize that you're never going to be able to compete with Horde players. That means your parses are always going to be lower, your speedruns are always going to be slower. It's just a big problem, and it leads to a lot of Alliance wanting to re-roll to Horde. The problem is, if you have Alliance players re-rolling to Horde, then there's a huge amount of guilds disbanding, and that means a lot of different players are going to quit the game. My take, we just sat through 2019, where Alliance players were way better for high-end raiding. Each faction really should have strengths and weaknesses. So for example, right now, Alliance have way better healing with the Holy Paladins. I would much rather be going into Molten Cores and knowing that my healing cores is rock solid. That being said though, I know you guys love to output maximum damage. I would love to hear from you if you think there should be any sort of change to bring the factions in line damage-wise. Alright, so we've talked balance changes, we've talked upcoming changes. Now it's time to figure out how do you position yourself the best in this time of chaos. First, quite a few experts, they're predicting Phase 5, late September, maybe around September 27th. Phase 5 is likely coming with new runes, new class balancing. So instead of panic rerolling your class, if your class is underperforming, maybe the wait and see approach is the best route. Second, if you do actually end up re-rolling, make sure to play a class that everybody needs even if they get nerfed, even if they get buffed. Instead of going flavor of the month like a rogue, maybe you should go feral druid, maybe you should go warlock or shaman. Something that every single guild is always going to need. So with all the different changes recently, from the 50% health buff in AV to the big hunter nerfs, it's clear that Blizzard was not satisfied with the current balance of the game. So if you're an Alliance player frustrated by class imbalances, or you're a Boomkin that really hates bottoming out the meters, it's very likely that there could be some changes coming your way in the near future. I would love to hear from you guys on which classes you think should be buffed, and which classes you think should be brought down as well. Thanks so much for watching, make sure to keep it locked in and subscribe for future upcoming guides. Then click on my ultimate phase 4 gold making guide. A thousand gold a week, easy.